What's going on everybody? This is Zach Sutton from Zach Sutton Photography. This is the first video that I'll be making of hopefully many more to come uh, about photography. And it's, it's going to range from anything from the shooting aspects of photography or the post-processing and editing of photography. This first video is actually about organization of your work though. So I want to talk to you a little bit about workflow and how to stay organized. I think it's one of the most important and most underrated things about photography. It's great to have all your photos organized, so if you do have to go back to them for print orders or just to retouch them or, or anything else, you've got it all there in one place and you don't have to dig around and you can have your PSDs there, everything already edited, turn off layers, turn on layers, and just have a good understanding of what you did and why. So without further ado, I'm going to start and give you some tips on how to stay organized in Photoshop. Okay, and what we have here is just a simple Photoshop. Um, I have a photo already open for you and I just wanted to go through my workflow process and tell you a little bit about these actions that I've built. These actions are going to be free to download. Uh, they're available in the description link of this video so I encourage you to please download them, edit them, make them your own. Obviously everybody has a different workflow process so certainly I wouldn't expect mine to work perfectly with what you do but I think these definitely give you a good backbone and which you can grow off of. The big thing I recommend you do is to make sure you keep everything named, keep, every, keep everything color coded and everything so it just keeps everything organized for you. I don't use actions at all as you can see here. I don't have any actions except for my workflow actions. Um, but I do believe actions are great for keeping a good workflow. So I'm just going to go through here and tell you what each one of these does. The first one here is named blemish removal and we'll just go ahead and click play for that one. And as you can see here, it just makes two quick layers and puts them in a group as well as color codes them. The first layer is just a copy of the background. The second layer is an empty back, is just an empty layer. And I use both of these independently to go in with the clone, clone stamp tool as well as the spot healing tool and just clean up any photos. I have two of them just because it does work sometimes differently on an empty layer as opposed to working well on a, a background layer. So I use them both and I, I edit with them both independently just to kind of see my process and my steps as I'm going through and re removing blemishes. This next one is called B&D which of course stands for burn and dodge. I'm a big fan of burn and dodge and I'll, I'll go through and show you how I burn and dodge on another tutorial but this one's going to give you, you just click it and it has two different ways of burning and dodging. The first one here is just curve adjustments and some of you may be familiar with this. Essentially how this works, it is a layer mask you bring the hardness down and essentially you can go in here and dodge like that by just painting white and as you can see it will brighten the photo and then you can go on the burn one and darken the photo by painting it dark. Uh, if you're not familiar with burn and dodge I recommend you read up on it. Um, also like I said I am planning on making a tutorial for it. I also have my old way which I actually physically use the burn and dodge tools. So this would be dodging it which would be lightening the eyebrow there. Uh, burning it would be of course darkening that eyebrow uh, as well as a visual a visual rep tool and this all this does is desaturate the photo and make it black and white sometimes I use this just to just to have a better understanding of the the contrast in the photo it sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to see when you remove color from it so I keep this visual rep here just to see what else is going on in the photos this next one is very very simple it's just watermark and all this does is open up a new folder and then has a watermark layer on it. And for my watermark, personally what I do is I have a brush and I know there's probably better ways of doing this but this is just the way I've always done it. So I go in here with my brush, watermark the photo, move it up to the corner and then maybe drop the opacity down on it. Again, if you watermark differently, you can certainly use a different technique. I just included this because I know there are some other people that, sh that watermark quite like I do. So the final one of course is just the the entire shebang, the workflow folder. Uh, by clicking this one, it does all of those workflow settings. And the nice thing about this is I usually have it set up. If you can, you can double click it here and set it to a function key. I usually have it set to F12, so I can open a photo, immediately press F12, and my photos layers are already set up for me. Certainly, there's different setups for different layers or for different photos, but of course, this gives you a good background. And again, these are going to be uh, free for download in the description link of this video so I encourage you to at least check it out play with it 
make it your own and uh, keep organized so that's all I've got for this first week's of video uh, tune in here in the next week or so and I'm gonna have some more for you as always you can check out my work at http colon slash slash z sutton photo dot com if you have any comments or suggestions please email me at zach z-a-c-h at z sutton photo dot com thanks a lot guys